Uh, welcome. It is now the after lunch um, sessions, and we are going to have some good speakers for you today. Um, we have a little bit of announce. Well, okay, it's not up there right now, but there are uh, organizers and volunteers, and if you have any questions at any time, feel free to ask them for help. Um, okay, that's not up. I know there were some announcements and some reminders, but I will remind you guys later. But right now we're going to get started with our post-lunch first sesh, which is Jonathan DeRosier. Uh, Jonathan is the senior engineer, software engineer at Bluehost. And I've known Jonathan for a while. Jonathan's a great human, makes you feel very welcomed and um, liked, which if we all know is a very um, amazing human attribute to have. So you're going to have a good speaker to listen to right now. Everybody, let's welcome Jonathan. Hello? Okay, there we go. So welcome everybody. Thank you. Hopefully you're not too, uh, too tired from lunch. I know sometimes you get a little, a little lull there, but hopefully I can keep you interested here. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about properly recognizing our contributors. And in such a large open source project, this is really difficult. Um, and so hopefully this will help you understand how we are tracking contrib contributors and um, the different dynamics of why it's difficult and the challenges that we have in, in being accurate. So a little, about, a little bit about me, uh, I am a full-time sponsored core contributor. Uh, I work at Bluehost as such, and I am a seven-time component maintainer currently. I am a core committer. I do a lot of the invisible work that helps keep the gears moving and keeping the project running. Um, and this includes collecting props with every release before the release goes out the door to make sure that everybody involved feels uh, that they're accurately thanked and, and they receive the credit that they deserve for their, their time. Um, and my employment is part of the Five for the Future program. If you're not familiar with that, I recommend that you check that out. It's basically Matt Mullenweg's challenge to anyone that makes money off of WordPress to reinvest 5% of their, their resources or time, whatever it might be, dollars, into preserving WordPress and um, you know, the, preventing the tragedy of the commons where we, we don't take more than we put back and then there's nothing for the next person, so. So I want to start by, by challenging you to think about what, what actually is a contribution. When you boil it down to what, what it represents and what it is, what is it? One of the greatest things about open source is that contributions can come in any shape, any size, Anybody can contribute because you can view the source and, and openly understand what's going on. It doesn't matter about your skill set, your background, uh, how much money you have, how much money you don't have. There's, there's so many ways that you can get involved in open source projects. And WordPress is no different. Contributors submitting code uh, is what I focus on a lot, but I also think about how that's only a very small subset of, of the contributions that actually happen within the project. And recognizing those other aspects are not the same as recognizing code contributors. And there's some very interesting things to think about there. We want our contributors to feel recognized and valued. And the reason for that is if you feel that you're appreciated, you're more likely to set up shop and return and, and, and want to spend your time there, right? So if you contribute somewhere and the person's kind of rude and um, you, know, you don't really feel like it was well received and you had an impact, then you probably aren't going to you know, spend your, your free time on that project. <coughs> but more importantly, how do we measure contributions? It's important we know what they are so that we can try to measure them. And then also, how do people expect to be recognized? Some people might expect to be uh, in a blog post, or you know, we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But we, want, we need to talk about what that means. Like, what does contributing, contributing represent to individuals, to the project, to groups, to communities within our community? And these are all factors that we can think of. When I was trying to think of one word that we could boil it down to, I came up with oxygen, and so contributions are really oxygen for an open source project. The project is the project's way of breathing and growing and uh, surviving and thriving. 
It all comes down to oxygen for that project. So fun little etymology uh, exercise here. Does anybody know who this is? Aretha Franklin, right? So she has a song that you've probably all heard, uh, Respect. And in that song, she says, I'm about to give you all my money, and all I'm asking in return, honey, is to give me my propers when you get home. And so in WordPress, when we give credit for something, we give props. And so I was like, where does this come from? And I know that props was proper attribution is what it stands for. But I started looking at, like, where does that come from? And she said that she got it from the streets of Detroit. And this was common slang in 1960s, and it basically was saying that you, you better give me my propers, you better give me the credit that I deserve for uh, what I'm going through, what I'm doing, what I'm accomplishing. And that over time has turned into props, and that's something that you're more commonly uh, familiar with. You know, oh, props to that person, or I give you props for the way that you handle something. And the first time that this occurred, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, the first time that this occurred in WordPress was in commit uh, 1102 by someone called Sax Matt, who is Matt's former username before he changed it. And basically somebody you know, had a bug report or a contribution and he gave them props for, for uh, finding that and reporting it. And over time we standardized this practice, we built it into, this is from our handbook's core committer, uh, commit message handbook. And so you can see at the bottom there that this is built in and every commit should have this line. And this is very transactional in that this happens at the point that the change is made to the code base and whoever is responsible for that. And this, could be, this is very loosely applied, so anybody that submits uh, design contribution to something, anybody that does testing, bug reporting, we're very liberal about how we give props and recognition. At the end of each release, we go through and we take a git log of all the changes that are going to be shipped for the first time. And uh, they're all compiled into something called the Credits API. And so the Credits API goes back all the way to WordPress 3.2. And we, we grab all those props and we parse them out. And they get listed in the Credits API. And so you can see we have, there's different groups, there's uh, you know, the core developers or the people that contribute the most during that release are called out in, in one way and then everybody else is included in the list no matter what. <coughs> Come on. Here you go. Here you go. The main thing that this powers is the credits page when you update WordPress. So update WordPress, you're probably familiar with the abouts page, but what you might not, may not know is that there's actually a credits tab that you can click and you can view every contributor that, that had a role in that version of the software being shipped. Um, so these are every credits page from WordPress 3.2 all the way to today. And you can see how it changes over time. We have different groups, um, noteworthy contributors. We uh, you know, got rid of core developer section. And as the project changed and how uh, we contribute to the project changed, we, we, we adjusted how we're giving credit on this page here. So this is the latest one that was in WordPress 6.4. Uh, 6.5 is coming out in a few weeks, so you can keep, keep an eye out for a new, uh, a new shiny design that we have. But everybody that contributes to this release is listed here. And this is done, again, by parsing that Git log and grabbing all of those names that received props and putting them into the credits API. If you are a translation uh, contributor and you're running a non-default locale on your website, there will also be a list of people that contributed to the translations of that, that, uh, those language files that you're running. But again, that's another form of a transactional 
uh, contribution where there's a specific thing that's a specific change that's made that we can track very easily. And I'll get into that a little bit more later, why that's important. One thing that I love about the Credits API is that it's open to anybody to use. Um, and it presents our contributor data for the world. Our, our community is incredibly creative, and they come up with all kinds of new ways to, to, to uh, use data and present it in an interesting way. So this is one, Display WP, and this is a website where they list um, each release, and they show the contributors for that release. But then they also take... Oh, next video. They also take, uh, this site takes a data perspective to this. So they, they show, chart. that one didn't work, that video didn't work. But basically it has a chart and it will allow you to see contributors over time, how many contribute to each release and how that progresses over time. So you can clearly see a growth in our contributor base over time as it becomes more popular and more people are involved. This is more of a community approach where uh, the WP Worlds is a website that was created that basically creates a community. But you can see this is less of a data approach. This is more of a, a community approach where everybody that's registered on this website as a contributor with a profile, you can see their details there. You can see what they're up to. You can see photos that they contribute um, and so on. So, according to our props, there are 5,673 unique contributors. This number is wildly inaccurate. And it's not for lack of trying, it's just this is only tracking those transactional contributions that we have a point where something changes that we can attach these names to. And that mainly changed during the Gutenberg era. It's not something that's the fault of Gutenberg. Um, it's just more, that was the time when we were seeing a really big shift in how we contributed. And that comes mainly in the form of GitHub, right? We started to have, uh, traditionally we've managed our code base in Subversion, which was hosted on WordPress.org. <clears throat> and now we started shifting towards a more social way of, of doing that through GitHub. And so Gutenberg obviously is our biggest project on GitHub. But we lacked that ability to manually say who contributed. So if you designed or if you tested things, there wasn't a good way to log that in a transactional way. Um, mainly the only people that would get credit are the people that made the commits that were submitted to push to the repository. So, we, we had a challenge and we had to think about how can we enable projects to have the same standards in contributing uh, as, as SVN, as in Subversion that we had. And so something I've been working on and we released uh, sometime in February was called the Props Bot. And the Props Bot is a GitHub action that can be used in any GitHub repo, even if it's not a part of the WordPress project. And it will collect all the activity that's attached to a pull request and any linked issues, and it will tell you everybody that's contributed to those, those changes and the, those, uh, those, those pull requests. And so when you get to the point that you're going to merge the, the, that transaction, that change, you have a, a list that's parsable and it's easy to, to, to grab in a Git log and we can go through and, and grab all those names. And it really brought our GitHub contributions to parity with our subversion ones. Having an automated process is really important because up until this point, it was really a manual process. Um, a lot of the time, the Gutenberg contributors, we would have to say, the people involved with the release would say, hey, who has been doing a lot of con contributing? Who, has, uh, who is missing from this list that we've parsed out? And having that automated process really helps reduce any bias that we may have, whether intentional or not. There was also a mismatch in the expectations. We would have a release go out, and unfortunately there's, there was always some hurt feelings, right? They felt that they were not accurately represented on that credits page. They felt that they did more work and they deserved to either have their picture, or they weren't listed at all on accident for whatever reason. 
And like I said, it wasn't through lack of trying. It was we were doing it in a way that using the data that we had available to us. But it's still not enough. So if you look at these two GitHub changes, uh, which one do you think is more important? They look, it's obvious, right? So what if I told you that one of these contributions was from someone that had just graduated from school, at a non-technical non degree, they decided to start a website, they couldn't afford home Wi-Fi, they were working at night, they would go to the coffee shop after, or they would sit in the park and they would use open Wi-Fi. They would learn about WordPress for a website that they were making with their friends. They went to the Portland WordPress user group and they asked a question because they were afraid to, uh, to, to submit a report because they were afraid it was not a, a good report, it wasn't a valid issue. They got a little confirmation from that and then they did their contribution and it got merged into WordPress. From there, they were able to talk about this experience in their job interviews. They were able to use this to change their situation and get jobs in, in the industry. And that was a way that they entered into, into the WordPress development phases. So this person is Aaron Jorben. He's a core committer, and he's one of our longest standing WordPress contributors in the community and, and leaders. Um, you can read more about his story on his HeroPress essay. And all he was doing was adding an argument to a do action call. It probably didn't help WordPress get any market share, but again, it helped with his interviews and it helped him change his economic state, his, his life, his, his, uh, his career. He, yeah, he has a, a, a tech career that he didn't have previously. And it's all because of his experience contributing and receiving his credit. One more here. If you think about which one might be more important. One of these is a update to a library called PHP Mailer, and it's important to keep our libraries updated, but the one that I really want to call out is the other one, which is when responsive images uh, support was merged into WordPress core. This happened in WordPress 4.4, and I'll let you guess where WordPress 4.4 was released in this chart of support for the source set attribute across the entire internet. So here we had meaningful impact on the global community uh, uh, and, and the global industry of like web. The previous example was an individual impact, and here is an example of global. Another example of this is when lazy loading images was merged into WordPress. Um, right, it was released on August 11th, so right before, this was how many sites had adopted it. And right after WordPress was released, you can see a sizable jump there in the adoption of this new browser feature. So impact can be very specific to one individual or multiple individuals. Impact can be global, can be regional or specific to very small groups of people. And that's pretty much impossible to measure. How can you, how can you know how something impacts someone enough to automate that and reduce bias in how you measure it? We can't tell this from commit logs. We need our contributors to tell their stories. This is where sites like HeroPress and the Faces of WordPress series come in. And while we may not have a good way of recognizing them in that transactional manner for the, uh, the amount of impact that these changes have, we need our communities to celebrate these people in other ways. Likewise, volume does not equal effort. Someone could submit one change, but they have to go to the park to even have Wi-Fi to learn how to make the code, code change suggestion. Or it could be someone like me that's sponsored and paid to contribute, and I contribute 100 things. That may not be weighed equally as that person, the amount of effort that that person put out. So again, that does not equal effort. So it's very hard to measure here. Likewise, the size of the contribution does not equal effort. Uh, maybe a really large patch is just updating an external library. There was some testing, but you know, not a lot of significant effort there. Or maybe it was an entirely new API like the REST API that was merged into core and took several years to perfect and, and polish. So measuring effort is also really impossible. So returning back to this, this question, a contribution can represent something entirely different to different groups of people and different individuals. 
Contributing can show compassion. It can show that it's a hobby. It can be a job. It can open doors to, to new social, economic statuses and opportunities. And how do you measure something like that? Some other things to keep in mind is privilege when it comes to contributing. I'm extremely priv privileged to be sponsored where this is my job to contribute to the project, but not everybody has that privilege of time. At the same time, all contributions are important. So contributions from privileged people are, you know, they're still important and, and valuable to the project, but we should be celebrating those other contributions more. Maybe someone, another privileged example would be they don't have money for equipment. They have to share laptops or something like that. It's easier for someone with certain experience levels to make certain contributions. So I'm very experienced in one area and I might make a contribution. But then there might be someone that's trying to learn an entirely new thing in WordPress they've never used before in order to make a suggested change to help them with a project or to help fix a bug. That person that's learning, taking the time to learn this new skill in this new area, uh, is, it's more important. There's more effort and more impact to them there. But again, that's not something that we can very easily automate. There's also sacrifice. Contributing also requires sacrifice in many ways. For me, I'm paid and sponsored to be here, but my main sacrifice is I'm here away from my family. There's different motivations. There's the right reasons, which have multiple benefits, and there's selfish reasons, which aren't bad, but they have more singular benefits. Some of them are motivated to do the right thing by sharing their experience and their expertise to help make the software better. And some are more motivated by things like collecting badges or um, getting a, a, a list of things that they've done to make them look like a better job candidate. And again, that, that's also hard to measure, right? They might have good intentions, but they're also trying to do it in a way that makes their career better and makes their, their situation better. And how do, we, how do we weigh that against the project and the impact that they're having? Another important factor to why this is so difficult, uh, such a difficult problem to solve, is how are people expecting to be recognized? For some, being listed on that credits page may be how they wish to be recognized. For others, maybe they want to have some type of CV that shows all their contributions that they can use for a job application. The main way that we recognize people right now is by version of WordPress. But that's not really appropriate for everybody. Say you are a contributor to the Learn WordPress site. While you're creating content that may be specific to features added in a release, a certain release, being listed on that credits page is probably not the appropriate way to recognize you or where you would expect to be recognized. So learning more about what our contributors expect and how they expect to be recognized and, and praised is, is also a really important part to this. Um, in today's auto-update world where we, by default, auto-update your website through all major versions and minor, uh, a lot of people don't even see the About page anymore. And so what does that mean in today's WordPress world? So also, what is the future of contributing? I talked about one specific point in the, the project history where there was a change in how we contributed to the different areas of the code base. But what, in, what behaviors do we want to incentivize our contributors to participate in? Our tools, our workflows, they will continue to change over time as new technology is released, new uh, websites to manage things are released, the project has new, new needs and new, new things that it needs to accomplish for its users. But we want to make sure that we're, we're, by how we recognize contributors and track what's going on, we want to make sure that we're, we're guiding our contributors to do the behaviors that we need to happen to help the project survive. So we want to give RESPCT and a talk about contributing would not be complete without giving props to people that I talked about my talk or got some information from them about my talk. And that's all I have today. Thank you.
Hello. Thanks, Jonathan. And now we have time for Q&A, so don't be shy. Yay. Hi, thank you for your talk. Uh, so you talked about uh, props for contribution, and you a little bit touched what I want to ask you. Uh, what about uh, contribution for uh, props? So uh, we see those kind of contributors for badges and for all those things. Do you think it's hurting project, or what, what does it say about our system for props and uh, generally about the project? Sure. Um, when you gamify things, there's always people that will be looking to play the game, so to speak. So um, I think that we, we never reject contributions. Contributions are always important in every size, shape. You know, we should always look to accept the contributions. Um, but when I talk about what do we want to incentivize? We want to, maybe they start trying to make their profile look better by having badges. Uh, we want to incentivize them to grow their skill set and contribute in more meaningful ways. Um, you know, maybe somebody only likes to contribute typo fixes, right? But maybe they're a translation contributor. Um, some people find their niche and that's where they like to stay, and that's perfectly fine. We, everybody's welcome to contribute how they're willing and able to. Um, but we want to just put that thought into how we can, we can onboard those people into more impactful contributions. Yeah. Any others? Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> thank you. Hi. Uh, Hi. Thank you for the talk. Amazing. Uh, really resonated with me. I, I'm not coming from much of a WordPress background here. Uh, I work on the community partnerships team at Mozilla, and I was as I'm listening, I'm just like, oh, this is all, we're dealing with so many of the same problems. So I'm really happy I get to be here with you all today. Um, I'm wondering, like, for contributions that are, you know, the non-code kind of contributions, uh, especially like in design, marketing, uh, you know, people sharing uh, different projects and things like that, like. Uh, how does this factor into props in WordPress? And I apologize if this is like a known, uh, you know, kind of thing for everybody. Uh, but I'm just really interested in learning more about how you all uh, handle this. Sure. Yeah. One of one of the biggest, which I didn't work into my talk, but one of the biggest blind spots we have is our community contributions. People that plan events like this, uh, wrangle sponsors, wrangle speakers, and and do all of those wonderful things that make these events happen. Um, so we. We, the design and testing and all that stuff, if it is for a specific ticket, um, in track we have tickets and you have to have a ticket before you can make a change. GitHub's a little bit different in that you can have a pull request without a defined problem before you start working on something. Um, but there's still that transactional point where you can pin all the people that, that, that work on that change. Um, and so, it's, it's a manual thing. The designers, the testers, they're not always included in that list automatically. But the burden of that falls on the maintainers of the project. It's our responsibility as committers and maintainers to ensure that people are receiving their, their praise that they deserve so that they feel welcome and, and, and want to continue contributing. Um, and so there's always that manual aspect of it to say like, okay, this actually was a spam comment. We're not gonna give them props, right? Um, and then in Slack, we actually had a meeting and this person was really helpful. So we wanna make sure we include them in their feedback in, in that. Um, so yeah, that, and that's part of the question is like, how do we pull in these additional areas of the project where we, their invisible contribution is happening, right? Um, and that's part of the question. Where, where, where it's not for lack of trying. Like I showed, it's it's just really difficult to to figure that stuff out. Um, and I was very code focused, but that's a great question because, yes, there's other aspects that that are entirely blind to to this process. Yeah, I can add to that as well because I give to WordPress through community only. So, and you get badges for community as well. So. There's a little bit they do. <laughs> and that comes, back to, whoop, that comes back to how people expect to be recognized, right? For someone like you that's very heavily involved, a badge is not really a big deal, right? But you, where do these people in different groups doing different things within the project expect to be recognized? 
Um, I mentioned how now not many people see that about page when they update WordPress because auto updates happen and you log in and you don't even know that it updated, which is great. It's what we want. But maybe it's time we pull the attribution out to a page on WordPress.org. And then maybe there's different sections where each team has a list of all of those. Um, and we recognize currently in the context of a WordPress version, but maybe there's different time frames that are more appropriate for community, uh, quarterly, annually, uh, monthly. Uh, maybe there's uh, different sprints within different teams that we can build support for where they can recognize within that context there. So those are all time frame, impact, all, all these things are just the, the variables in different areas of the project to consider. Drew? Hello. Um, I kind of want to piggyback off kind of what you just said, John. Um, like, uh, are there other kind of ideas if maybe if you could wave a magic wand and get, you know, your top one, two, three things that you would love to see change in recognition for contributions? I wonder what are, your, what are some of the quote unquote best ideas that you might have? And, and, and maybe a second part of that. Have we ever kind of fielded feedback from a larger community about how they want to be recognized, you know, for, for the contributions? Yeah, so one, the first thing I would want is the prop spot because um, as someone that does a lot of the work for the releases to get out the door, I was manually collecting all the Gutenberg contributors and merging them in with the WordPress contributors, the WordPress subversion ones. Um, so now that we have that automated process, that's so much easier. Um, but the great thing about PropSpot is it doesn't just work on Gutenberg, it can work on any repository and it will just give you a WordPress flavored way to track the contributors. Um, the co-authored by trailer that you saw in the screenshot is actually a Git thing and it's supported on GitHub. So when those are merged, it will actually show that the person contributed to that on their GitHub profile. Um, and so maybe the documentation team, maybe uh, the, the, the events team, they also add that to their repository where they manage their documentation. And when they make a merge, they can include that. And then we would have that automated process to rip out that list and display it wherever we'd like. Um, was the second part of your question? Is there any like data around? Yeah. The question is, is there any data around like, how people expect to be thanked and exactly, recognized? Exactly. Yes. Um, so last year we had the WordPress Community Summit where a group of about 100 of the, the more active contributors got together and discussed a lot of the pressing problems in the project and um, how we can solve them so that the project can continue to grow and survive. And there was a, a very common theme. There was about two or three themes that we noticed a lot. And one of them was uh, our contributor recognition and how we, how we recognize people. So we do have some good ideas. If, if that interests you, I recommend you, you go to the Make WordPress blog and check out those summaries from all the discussions that we had. Um, one, of the, one of the themes that we had was learning from what other projects are doing. Um, Drupal has a, a really robust prop system in that they they have, um, so say they have a group of things that you can do, and then once you do them five or six times, you can no longer get points for doing those things. You have to kind of go to the next thing. And so they kind of incentivize you with this uh, declining value in specific things and to, to push you onto more advanced ways of contributing. Um, they also do things like they recognize corporations, which is something we don't typically do. And the way they do that is by looking at who they sponsor, how much time, how much money they give back, and then there's a grading system for that. And so maybe we need to come up with some type of weighting of, of how we measure contributions across the project. Um, it doesn't really answer fully like how people expect to be thanked. Uh, and I think we just kind of find that out as people, uh, unfortunately, we find that out most effectively when people have hurt feelings, right? They, how come I'm not on this list? Or I, I did this and I don't think it was, it was included in this. Um, so yeah, I, I don't really have a good way to know that. Maybe some of the data from the WordPress uh, contributor survey that we do could help with that. Uh, but we're open to ideas. If you have any suggestions around how to, how to better understand these, these dynamics would be, would be really great to share. It could be your first contribution or your first prop. <laughs> Anybody else? 
Okay, well, don't go anywhere <laughs> just yet. The team has a gift for you to speak. Thank you. This is a contribution. <laughs> <laughs> Props. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Oh. Oh, oh we're going to do a picture? Okay. <laughs> And then the announcements are there are job boards. So if anyone's looking for a job or would like to say you're hiring, we have some job boards. Um, let me see where it's located in the first floor. Okay, I have it right here. Okay. <laughs> and then um, don't forget to visit the sponsor hall. There's one on the second floor and the first floor. So go say hi. If you ask a question, hang around. I have a little, little thing to give you for asking a question. 